throughout the year. Welcome to St. Mary Parish as we celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we gather with our hopes and prayers, we also open our hearts to listen for God to give us direction and purpose. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Rich Stork, assisted by Deacon Dan Georgian. Today, let us remember in our prayers Joe and Mary Ruth Kimoski, Joe Grezek, Cecil and Makut Timbal, Liberado Kuyugan, Felicidad Perdia, Randy Candelaria. In reverence for the liturgy, please check you to silence yourself when we open our hearts to God's grace. Also, please keep your face mask covering your nose and mouth for our time together. Thank you. Our gathering song is number 600. Sing praise to God at number 600. Please stand. <laughs> So we thank the Lord and we sign ourselves and receive his blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, we come together that God may transform our lives. Let us open our hearts and allow God's mercy to penetrate our hearts. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us to live in holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word guides the desires of our hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to new life in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to a life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us, follow after, and make us always determined to carry out the works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken my priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 sharper 
than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Je Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come, follow me. At that statement his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive 100 times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That's now the third week in a row that mask has gotten me. <laughs> this can end any time now. <laughs> when pigs fly, you can't judge a book by its cover, and it's a piece of cake. These are all idioms. 
You know those memorable little phrases that our parents and grandparents used to teach us some of life's little lessons. Well, I had a father who frequently used idioms for exactly that purpose, and I loved him for it. He used them so often that at his funeral mass, one of his grandsons made Grandpa's little sayings the focal point of his eulogy. It seemed like my father had an idiom for just about every situation. Now don't get all worried. I promise you I will not spend the next six minutes boring you with all the smartly worded little phrases that a nondescript gentleman named Vince Georgian once taught his son Dan. No, instead his son wants to share with you, hopefully in a successful effort to break open the meaning of today's scripture reading, one of my most favorite of the idioms I heard my father say. An idiom which came rushing back into my memory as soon as I read today's gospel. And that saying is, Son, you will never see a Brinks truck following a hearse in a funeral procession. <laughs> For those of you that may not know what a Brinks truck is, it's a brand of armored vehicle used to transport money and other valuables between locations, usually retail stores and banks. In preparation for this homily, I also discovered that some of you may know that idiom under another phrase. And that phrase is, no one has ever seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. This version was quoted by Denzel Washington in several of his commencement speeches that he gave at some of the most prestigious universities in the country. But regardless of who coined or spoke this rich and somewhat witty saying, I offer for your reflection that the message of today's gospel is the same as the lesson that Vince Georgian attempted to convey to his son, and it is the same message that the Oscar-winning actor Denzel Washington attempted to communicate to those graduates. Jesus was warning the rich man who knelt before him. Jesus was warning his disciples. And Jesus is warning each of us gathered here today that our earthly possessions are of no value to those who seek the kingdom of God. For a fact, Jesus warns us that not only are they of no value, but earthly possessions can also often weigh us down in our search for the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, we cannot take it with us. We cannot take our earthly possessions with us and we cannot utilize our time, talent, or treasure after we have breathed our last. On the day of judgment, we will stand before our God with nothing but the scars of our unabsolved sins. No money, no possessions, no talent, we will stand in judgment before our Lord, possessing nothing, fully dependent upon His mercy and His mercy alone. I know this gospel message can be very difficult to accept. At first, it may appear that Jesus is implying that all earthly goods are somehow evil. But that is certainly not the case. Jesus, along with all faithful Jews of the time, 
would have viewed, viewed the natural world and all of its bounty as a blessing and a gift from the Heavenly Father. Where Jesus' teaching transcends traditional Jewish thought, though, is that Jesus was teaching his disciples, Jesus is teaching each of us that we are simply stewards of the blessings we are granted as we journey through this earthly life. The blessings belong to God. We are simply called to be good custodians of those blessings and to use those blessings for the benefits of all that we encounter. The sin is not the treasure, the time, or the talent. The sin is our desire to possess what we are only called to be stewards of. The difficult message in today's gospel isn't that earthly wealth and privilege is evil. The difficult message is the realization that all that we possess in this world Everything that we believe we have earned in this world, in fact, has nothing to do with our effort, but instead is a gift, a blessing from a loving and just God. The rich man in today's gospel approached Jesus thinking that his obedience to the commandments was enough to earn him eternal salvation. It's not enough. The rich man who knelt before Jesus might have even thought that all his worldly success was a reward for a life well lived. But he was wrong. The possessions he accumulated during his life were not intended solely for his use. No, instead, they were to be shared with those less fortunate than he. As Jesus says in Luke's Gospel, much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, let us acknowledge our unworthiness for all that we have been blessed to have in this world. Let us pause. Let us give all the credit to the God who made us. Let us not desire to possess what is not ours, but instead desire to share those blessings that have been bestowed upon us by a benevolent Father. The blessings that we are called to share with all that we encounter in our daily lives. Let us pray for the strength to unbridle ourselves from the trappings of this life so as to free us to rise to the heavenly heights of the eternal life. again come to profess the truths that God has given to us, the church gives to us. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born 
the Father and for all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, the God and God made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he became God from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and it became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He suffered that death was very good, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He is ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God. He will not come again in the glory of the church, but the way of the heaven, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who brings the age of the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord. So it was spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Salvation of Worship. I confess the baptism for the forgiveness of the sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Jesus taught his disciples that all things are possible with God. And so we dare to call upon the Lord with prayers and the needs that only God can answer. Our response is, Thy will be done, O Lord. Thy will be done, O Lord. We pray for all of the disciples of Jesus, that the faith we pro profess with our words may be carried out in our daily lives, we pray. Thy will be done, O Lord. For the transformation of the hearts of our national leaders, May they be open to wisdom from on high and to working together for the sake of the common good. We pray. In this Respect Life Month, we pray for a spirit of discipleship, that we may show our concern for the hungry and the poor by sharing our abundance. We pray. We ask God's strength for all who are gathered here. That we, that we may not allow possessions and riches to distract us from our growth as disciples of Christ, we pray. I will be done, Lord. For all who commit street violence or domestic abuse, that the Holy Spirit may guide them to correct their ways, we pray. I will be done, Lord. May God's presence be known by all who are sick and those who are facing surgery. For all living in nursing homes and those living with mental illness. And we ask God's grace on all who care for them. We pray. Thy will be done, O Lord. For our friends and relatives who now rest in eternal life, especially Myrtle Bloomfield, may they and their families find comfort in the light of Christ's presence. We pray. Thy will be done. We now quietly bring our own personal prayers, needs, and hopes before God. And for these we pray. Good and gracious God, we know that you give us all we need in our lives. Strengthen us to fully give ourselves to you to share your, gra your grace with all those who are in need. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together number 684, Psalm of Hope, number 684.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the reason of your salvation. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrifice with these sacrificial offerings. That through these acts of devout, devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up your heart, O Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought before you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray, look upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God and our Mother, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, your glorious martyrs, our own patron saints, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity all of us who are your pilgrim people, your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Cardinal, and his assisting bishops, with Daniel, our pastor, the clergy, and with all the people that your Son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give them kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon this world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand as brothers and sisters, and we pray in the words that our brother Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory of and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done your but only the word of your
My dear brothers and sisters, since some of us are unable to share the Blessed Sacrament in the same manner as we are accustomed, I invite us to pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. the church through RCIA. Next Sunday, October 17th, we will gather after the 1030 a.m. mass in the chapel for our first session. Anyone else interested is invited to join. All are invited next Sunday, immediately after the 1030 a.m. mass. St. Mary's School will kick off the 2021 Bison Fund with a fun and food truck tailgate party from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the football field. Rain or shine. So I suppose if it rains, bring your umbrella. The Bison Fund is the major fundraiser for St. Mary's School. The event will have fun and food for all, including games, raffles, bingo, and a live streaming of the Bears-Packers game win or lose, I suppose. Please see the bulletin for more details and mark your calendars to join us for this fun-filled event for a great cause. To observe October as Respect Life Month, baby bottles are available after Mass today in support of the Women's Centers of Greater Chicago Land's Respect Life efforts. Bottles filled with your donations will be collected the last weekend of October Thank you for your support and generosity in advance. The annual winter coat drive continues until October 15th. We can only accept brand new coats due to the pandemic and we are emphasizing children's and infant winter coats. Donation bins are in the church, school, office, and rectory. You can also make financial donations towards the purchase of coats. Please see the bulletin for further details, and you may want to look back upon the deacon's homily if the spirit moves you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone here who's going to be running in the marathon tomorrow? Uh -huh. Family members? Well, I'm, we're going to pray for them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> here it goes. All who have the courage and the willingness to do so. And so we, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord, may we, your family, always rejoice in the mysteries of your love. Grant that we may find life in not only receiving your grace, but also in sharing your grace and your gifts with others. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, 
the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to be Father Peter Deacon Dan for a second and go off script. We have exciting news to announce that Stephanie and Tim are our guitarists. One of our singers welcomed their baby on Tuesday. So my Our closing song is number 865, soon and very soon, number 865.